thank you. I'm, I'm very, very um, excited and at the same time grateful to be here today. Uh, thank you for the, the, the students who came. That's amazing to have people here, but also the ones who are uh, not sleeping, but here uh, in the middle of their night. So thank you as well. And Uo, of course, who stayed with me today. Uh, I really love uh, being part of this community. And, and so this is a very special moment to be here, share this project with you and hopefully uh, inspire yourself uh, to, to get into your own journey as well. And, uh, and I'm more than open to also get feedback from you. And, uh, and I have so many challenges so, so far that it, it's been more than great uh, to be able to share it here and get feedback of one of the most uh, important communities for me. So thank you again. Uh, so let me share a little bit about myself. I'm from Guatemala. I study here architecture uh, in actually the next building uh, in 2005 I started and something that's, that was astonishing for me from the beginning was like oh my god I love architecture but I'm not sure if I want to be like the traditional architecture you know like I didn't want it to be a designer I, I, I didn't feel like the inspiration will come to me and I was like I'm not sure this is not this is I love architecture but I haven't found the way right and I remember uh, I was struggling uh, at finding what to do with the career but on the same time working very hard I'm, I'm, I definitely have someone who likes to work very hard and be very competitive so I said okay never mind I have to find it uh, either way I'm gonna work hard through this and on the last year of my career, I got a class of, of real estate development. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. What is this? You know, like who does this? You know, and I remember the whole, the rest of my co uh, colleagues were like, this is the most boring class we have ever had. Like, why do you like it? And I was like, I don't know, but this is what I want, you know? And so I was very excited to finally find something that I really feel in emotional, right? So uh, when, whenever I finished uh, school, I went to start uh, to work for a real estate company, which, which is Calidad Immobiliaria. It's a really big company here in Guatemala for real estate development. And I was part of the, of the group who did the projects from the beginning. So we were the ones looking for the land, then we were looking for what to build there. And so we needed to work with market and sales, but also with finance um, to define what the project will be. And at the end, we did kind of a business plan that we shared with uh, our board. And if the project was approved, then a new team of ex executing ex execution will take the project operations and will execute the project and we will start all, all over again. So it was my first uh, interaction, I will say, with the world of entrepreneurship without knowing it because I was kind of an intrapreneur because each real estate project becomes kind of a new venture every time, right? Uh, but something that also got my mind in that moment was that the projects, when, when, whenever we build them, uh, at least on paper, were filled of things that will be great for the project itself and the quality of life of the people uh, in the surroundings, but also for the building, right? For example, sustainable uh, elements, but also uh, things that will make the connection with the, the urban spaces more integrated. And, but whenever the project was filtered by finance, it was like, oh, all, all those things were cut off because the project wasn't feasible, economically speaking. And that was very hard to see because at the end, if, well, of course, we know that here, right? But if the project doesn't work and doesn't have the returns that the board was expecting, it didn't go. And, and unfortunately, all those intangible things were cut off every time. And whenever the market was hard, harder and harder and became harder and harder, there were less projects that we could attack or develop because the returns uh, weren't the ones that the people were looking for, right? And so we started looking for opportunities or solutions that we could implement to have a more flexible capital structure 
that could give us the opportunity to have this type of projects. And to be more concrete, for example, a uh, retail project has to be uh, patrimonialistic. Uh, you, you cannot build and flip and get all the money and put it in somewhere in, in another project. That will give you a faster return uh, that someone who's gonna, or a project who's gonna give you rents for a longer period of time, right? So those type of projects we couldn't tackle because uh, of the structure of the return. So it was a kind of frustrating, right? And in the meantime, I, I, I learned the importance of working with different persons because if I wasn't able to talk with the finance, I couldn't move on my project, but, or if sales and marketing were in the line, then the project could be beautiful, but no one will sell it, so no one will buy it, so the project doesn't work, right? So the, the, the importance of, of being able to go in all the, the directions and be able to be that chief of orchestra, you know, that could work with everyone else, that was a skill that I needed to learn very quickly in my career in order to, for the project that I was leading to, to actually proceed to the other level, right? So in, during my time in Calidad Immobiliaria, I also met Juanma, who's one of uh, the president of Grupo Entero, but he's also one of the professors of Acton. And, uh, and that's how I learned about Acton MBA. And he told me, you should, you should take a class. And in that time, a lot of directors from Calidad Immobiliaria and other units uh, of, the, of the group were taking classes here, but only the C-level was coming. And I was like the new, the newest employee saying, hey, I want to go as well, you know? And, she, and I remember Juanma saying, yeah, for sure, you should try. You should try, take a class. And uh, I, I didn't know about uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. I, I only knew that it could be great to have a combination in my career uh, with architecture, uh, especially after knowing that real estate development was something that I wanted. So uh, I decided to jump. And, and I remember he told me, you should, you should start with only one class because it's a lot of work. And, uh, and you should start with customers. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And when everyone else was spending, I don't know, maybe an average of five, 10 hours per, per uh, case, I was spending kind of 20 hours. And I needed to have uh, like an, a finance encyclopedia online for, to look for pretty much every word of the case because I didn't know what they were telling because that was not, not my background, remember? I was an architect, so I was like, oh my God, what is, what is this? I don't understand a thing, you know? So I went to, my, to the others and were, oh, you can, I cannot share because this is Acton. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Uh, so I went to the professors and I begged them, really begged them to give me uh, side classes so I could just understand what they were talking about. And after having a lot of those, I was like, oh my God, I finally got it. Uh, and then I took EJ and then Life of Meaning. And then I said, okay, that's it. I want to take the whole thing, you know? And I also remember going to Hugo and say, you know what? I, I want to take this, but I also want to go to Austin. And, and Hugo said, uh, ah, well, that's not an option now. Okay, how can we make it work? And I'm always this person who wants to be like the, Conejillo de Indias, I don't know how to say that in English, but the thing is, I'm, I like to open the path and I'm willing to, to pay the price, you know? So I was like, oh, how can we make it work? I'll do whatever you need. And I, 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 I promise I will be someone who's gonna be working very hard over there so other people who come can come because that was something also important, you know? Like, what if you don't perform as good as Austin will hope for? and that will close the door for others, you know? Remember, I, I, I remember we were having that concern. Uh, so I was like, oh no, you have, let's do it, let's do it. I was very persistent, I have to say. Um, so so at, at the end, I made it, and, and I was the first student who went to Austin in, in this exchange program. So I, I took half of the, uh, of, of the MBA here and half in Austin, and I finished it in two years. And I really think that it was amazing because I got the best of having an executive program as the one in Guatemala, but also uh, to have this immersive experience in Austin. And um, so, yeah, after finishing that in, in my, my MBA, I, I was still working in Calidad Immobiliaria, and I remember having a lot of pressure of, okay, now you have an MBA, and it's an entrepreneurship, so you're gonna start something, right? And I was like, I don't know. 
I don't know what to do, you know? Like, I remember having the class of opportunity, the one you were telling me, and I was like, I don't have an idea. What can I say? So, so I was like looking for other students, were like, what, what is your idea? Tell me, maybe I can help you, you know? I, I was very good at doing that. So, and, and with Juanma, I work a lot like that. So he, he has so many ideas, and I was like, he was the one telling me ideas, and I, I found, I figured out how to make it work. So I was very used to that interaction, right? And, and I remember having a lot of pressure for myself, for my parents, for my friends, and for even the group in Calidad Mobiliaria and the group itself, like, are you starting something? I was like, oh, God. Uh, and I also was in a, in a specific moment when I, want, when I wanted to start a family. So I was like, okay, is this the best moment or not? And I, I'm sharing this because it's also about life of meaning, right? So I was like, ah, I, need, I still feel that I can have to learn more things uh, in the group and I can learn here. This is a very open space for me to work. I had a lot of freedom. Uh, and I, it's safe enough for me to also be able to have stability and, and economic stability as well, and also so start my family. So I did that, and I said, okay, that's, this is gonna uh, this is gonna last five years. At the end, it was ten years. So after the when when the five uh, when I when it turned five, that that was very hard on me. I was like, oh my god. In that moment, I felt okay. I still don't have an idea. Uh, I, I do have experience. I feel I can learn more, but I said I'm going to stay here for five years and it's done and I'm not ready. So what am I going to do? So I started looking for the ideas of others. And in the meantime, I went through working of, in Calidad Immobiliaria to the holding and I started working with different real, uh, companies and I realized I was very good at changing industries and talking to different people. Uh, so the skill that I learned from the beginning uh, of working with different departments was actually very helpful and powerful because I was able to replicate it, but in different industries. So I started uh, leading different uh, innovation methods in order to create new projects. So I realized I'm very good at this process of building something from new, starting something new, learning new things, uh, and that's something that I, I also improve or learn in a more deeply way here. The learn how to learn was actually a, a very significant uh, experience or value that I learned here in Acton. So after that, uh, so I saw, okay, I have to be more open to opportunities, you know, like, but I was still working in, in innovation in, in Grupo Entero. And uh, I remember very well having a good friend who was actually uh, doing her MBA, not, not in Acton, just another MBA, and she had this amazing idea about empowering women and helping them create awareness of how to understand where their paradigms were and how to overcome them. And I was like, oh my God, I like that. So can I help you? And I started helping her and, say, and then I said, I like this idea. I like you as a partner. Can I be your partner? And I started working, but I, and I, I started spending time on that project on the side because I again I had a lot of ex, of freedom in in this platform that was for me Grupo Entero, right? And in that experience, I remember starting working and, and trying to own the project, but felt a resistance from her. It's like at the end it was her idea, you know. And uh, after working a few months, she came and she said, "Hey, can we get?" Have, a, have lunch, uh, no, dinner, she was at dinner, and she said, uh, I cannot move forward with this, and it just doesn't feel right, and it's, it wasn't, it's not about you, it's just like, I don't feel right, and, and I said, oh my God, I, I felt that, and so this thing about your gut feeling, I, I knew something wasn't working, but I wasn't able to pinpoint what was it, but, but I think gut, gut feeling does have something to do in entrepreneurship as well, and we need to learn to connect with it. Uh, so in, for me, in that moment, I was like, God, this is awesome. I was like, I, I thought I had an idea. It wasn't my idea again, but I, I thought it wasn't my idea. So that was a very hard uh, experience for me because uh, in the other side, I was very successful. I had a, this amazing job uh, in this amazing company who, who is very prestigious uh, with a very good income, 
and I was rejected by someone else with his uh, with her idea. It was like, oh my god, yes, you know, that, that was very hard. Um, so I came back to my work, and uh, I, I had so many opportunities in this in this job. Uh, so so I, I, I was I. I, I was interested as well, but I always felt the, the uh, I will say, the, the spark of doing something for myself. Uh, I remember that I put that on my life of meaning, and, and that's something that I also uh, encourage you to do, to, to actually go back to that process of life of meaning and, and journey that you've built, and say, okay, I, was I meaningful about this? You know, like, do I really want to do that? And, and for me, it was, yes, I want, so let's keep it in mind, right? So then I had another opportunity, but this time I was pregnant. And I was approached by, the, by a group of, of founders, they were serial founders, uh, that, that wanted to plan an innovation event in Guatemala. And I thought, oh my God, again, this is an amazing idea. It's not mine, but I can definitely do something for this idea. And they were, but we have to work very hard because it's uh, in three months, uh, so I started working on the side because something that I also very, was very careful it was not to affect my job, right? And I, I remember spending a lot of time in there, uh, staying night, having discussions with my husband saying, stop, you're pregnant, you know, like, stop. Is this something good for you? And I was like, no, but this is something where I can become uh, a partner as well, because again, I asked, and they say yes. But two weeks before the event, they say, you know what? We, we think it's not a good idea, so you're out. Two weeks before. And I, I, I did so many things, and at the end, I stayed during the event, and I did my part, because that was very hard on me. I couldn't just leave the things. I, I, maybe I should, I don't know, but that's not who I am. So at the end, I stay. And it, and it was for nothing, you know? So that was, again, something hard on me. And I say, okay, maybe I need to learn how to find an idea for myself, you know? Uh, so in that moment, I also decided to prepare myself to that launch because I realized I was starting to, have a, uh, to be afraid uh, because I was very comfortable. Uh, I had a very good job, again and maybe a job who could be uh, wanted by a lot of people. Uh, again, a lot of economic stability, and, and it was a very good job in the sense that there were so many opportunities and so many to, things to be done, right? And whenever I decided that, I had the opportunity in the group to be part of a new venture that they were about to, to invest, and it's called Recurrente, maybe you have heard of it. So, it's, uh, so that was my first time of being able to be in very hands-on on a project from the start and to, to see how it grows. And I realized I, I also not only was very comfortable already, but I also built a lot of paradigms of myself. I thought I wasn't good at negotiating. And there I was negotiating with the big banks from Guatemala. And I thought I wasn't able to sell. And I was selling all the first customers because no one else wanted to do it. And I was like, oh my God, who, who told me I, I'm not good at this myself? No one did, you know? So I said, this is the moment where not only those things, the moment of awareness that the cost of opportunity of staying where you are or start, starting something else, even if you have to go through the effort and of growing because it's a big effort, I decided to jump. And in that moment, I remember uh, looking for a coach because I, got, oh, I said, okay, I've been putting my value as a person in my results, in my achievements, and if I wanted to become an entrepreneur, that's not the way to go because otherwise I'm going to lose myself very fast in this path because it's not a, a, fa a easy path, right? So I decided to, to work on myself before preparing uh, to start a new company. And that's what I did for a whole year. And during that process, I also prepared with the coach how I could make a transition from all the roles that I got. Because by, by the, this time, I was also, I was the general manager of innovation for the whole corporation. 
I was the manager uh, for the whole corporation for customer experience. I also was the CEO at Recurrente, so I had those big names on me that I couldn't just leave and I didn't want to leave because at the end, I think the, the world is so small that those doors are important to be open. And for me, it was part of being grateful and, and being very, yeah, very grateful to, to close or finish those paths in a very good way. So I, did, I decided to stay six months to make all the transition. That's what, what I did. But in the meantime, so whenever I was ready, and I said, okay, now I'm ready to make this. I'm gonna start something. I don't know what, but I'm gonna start something. And in that precise moment where I decided that on, in those days, I received an invitation from Google, and it was to, to go to the competition of Acton. And I was like, oh my God, this is in three months. Uh, this is exactly what I need. I'm going to have the pressure here. I know I can work under pressure, and I know myself, and I know I'm not going to be able to get in there without having something. So that's the best go way to go, and this is the community that I love, so let's jump. So, I, and I remember I, I saw Hugo the, the next day and he said, hey, Gabriel, you're the first one uh, signed into it. And I was like, really? Uh, I was impressed, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, why not? Because I just got the email and get to the link and paid. You know, I was like, and then I realized the students didn't pay. I was like, Hugo, why do I pay and the students didn't? But then that's another, that's another thing. But I don't even thought about it. You know, I was like, oh my God, this is, the, the universe calling for me, you know? So I did it, and I remember telling you, okay, I'm in, I don't have a project. Maybe something about women, I, don't, I, I do have something about the women, but the thing is, I was like, maybe something about, about women. I remember who was saying, yes, Gabriela, you, you should think about it. You know, he's always very polite, but I could, I could see that this, this is good. it didn't go in anywhere, you know? And I was like, okay, that's not the way to go. <laughs> so I, I thought, okay, let's stop. Let's think, what, uh, what am I good at? Uh, what do I really care to actually commit and make the jump of this? Because the cost of opportunity was huge. And, uh, and where, where are also the things, where is my passion? You know, so I said, okay, definitely real estate. That's where I want to be. I definitely want tech. Uh, I got the experience of, of getting a, an, being a, on a startup with a tech at the core. And after reading and seeing so many things about tech, and after and experiencing, I was like, I cannot think about a project without tech at the core. And, um, and what is a, a problem that hasn't been solved and is big? And I realized, oh my God, the thing about the payment, you know, like the financing of the project doesn't work. And that's something that I think that if we make it more flexible, could make better projects and better projects could make better cities and our cities are so badly planned and created. You know, like urbanization in LATAM is one of the most, the region of one of the biggest uh, or more region, more urbanized in the world. And, and it grows so fast that there we have so many problems. And going through the process of empowering real estate companies who is one of the main stakeholders in this ecosystem, uh, I thought it's a good idea to go and I felt very passionate about it. You know, I said, okay, this is a, my way to actually help build better cities and also open it to more people because a lot of people will like to invest in real estate projects that today they can't. And that's something that I went through my, uh, as a person and and with my, my husband as well. We thought, okay, this is a good time to start investing. And I say, yes, we should invest in real estate because I know about it and I know it's a good vehicle. But whenever we started, it was like, aha, uh -huh, where? Uh, we bought an apartment and that's it. I was like, aha, uh -huh, I cannot replicate this. You know, like I, I still have a debt. So I was like, this is, not, this is not my way to go. This is for very wealthy people. And I said, why is it for wealthy people? And when, I, when we, w we were talking about that with the real estate company, it was like, because we don't want to deal with so many investors, you know, that's just crazy. And actually it was crazy for more than 10 years until the blockchain came. And so that's where I said, oh my God, this is what it is. This is it, you know? Like, so I started this sprint, I will say, of working, 
building this project and I was, I was also tra training for a marathon in, for New York. So I couldn't sleep so night because I, I needed to wake up at five to go to running and then I work and then I didn't eat to work on my project because I said I cannot go to, to Acton without uh, being very prepared. And I didn't know about blockchain. I didn't, I'm not a, the finance girl. You know, I was like, oh my God, I have so many to learn. But I said, I don't care, I will do it. And I, I actually talked with my partner. I said, okay, I need this. Can you please help me? We have two little kids, two girls that are under five. So it's a lot of work, family work. And it, he was like, okay, but three months, that's it. You know, so I, so I finished the marathon. Then I started the other marathon who was preparing to act on. And I remember going there and saying to everyone, I came here to win. But <laughs> I really told that to the people for telling me to myself, you know, like it was like, I'm going to here to win. And I, I, I don't remember how many times I told that to, uh, to Hugo. And he was like, yeah, Gabriel, I know, I know you're here for that. But, but I was like, yes, I'm here to win. And I remember just practicing the whole day. And the rest were like, oh, let's go to the restaurant. And I was like, no, I can't. I need to practice, you know, like, uh, and that's where I found out there were people who were there for granted. And I was like, how come? But, but yeah, so I was like, no, I have to be so work hard, work hard, work hard. And well, when, when, I, when I finished, I was, I was the third place. So uh, third place is like this big win, but also the big loser, right? And I was like, oh my God, I'm so competitive. And I was like, yeah, I win, but third place, oh my God. So at the beginning, it was like, I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated. But then I said, OK, stop. This is not going to go take you anywhere else. So let's just take this frustration and make it work. You know? So I decided, OK, I'm, I didn't want, but I was close enough. And I just spent three months of my life uh, night doing this. So maybe this is not a bad idea. So if I put more of my time in here, I can make it work. So that's where I decided I'm going to follow through this idea. And I decided to start in Mexico because I knew how hard it is to start a company in Guatemala, especially if you want to expand and especially if you are a tech company. So I said, OK, let's start in Mexico. And, uh, and when I decided that, I started th talking, talking with people uh, who, who was in Mexico and, he, and who knew about tech. And that's how I found my co-founder. She is a CTO. She's our CTO and she's the full stack engineer. And the way we met, is very, I, I, I will say, like life let, let us met because we, uh, I was looking for people who could help me uh, understand if what I found in the tech sector was the one that what I needed to my project, right? I was good enough to say, I think these are the best providers, but that was, but I didn't felt uh, that I had the, the, the whole knowledge to actually go through the process of deciding and committing with some of them, you know, because there was a lot of technicism. So uh, I was talking with this friend from here and he said, you know what, I have this friend who went with me at, at the MBA in Mexico. Let's talk with him because he's a tech guy. And that tech guy said, you know what, I have this friend who likes these type of projects. Do you want to meet, meet her? And I was like, yes. And, uh, and that, that girl is actually today my co-founder, and when she came and she said, you know what, the way I can help you is I, I want to become your co-founder. Are you open to that? I was like, yes, but how can we know that? You know, like, how can I know if it's you or you or you? I, I felt like someone was proposing me in, in without knowing her, you know? I was like, oh my God, what can I do with this? So at the end, uh, we decided to give ourselves a time and say, okay, let's try. Let's define how we're going to work. And, um, and that's how we started. And it worked out very well. So I, I really think the importance of, of giving yourself these this, this times of experiment and try is, is very important because at the end, we, we don't know. And, and whenever we ask, and we ask by LinkedIn or with friends, we can go very, very far. You know, like the network or the social capital is actually very important. That's, that's what I learned also in this journey. 
so to, to wrap up very quickly uh, on the rest of the process, so um, this is a very, this, this project to be able to, to work has a lot of regulation. So the next step for me was to use all my savings and all, all what I want in the His Fellowship competition uh, and put them to see how I could solve the regulations and, and all the taxes thing and the part of the, of the tech. And I did that during working uh, in Grupo Entero uh, on the meantime. And I, I finished my work in Grupo Entero in Recurrente in July uh, of last year. And, uh, and I said goodbye to my salary in that moment. That was very hard, also, uh, not only with, for all the people, of course, because I, I do have a lot of great uh, gratitude for them. And they're still my friends. And I say that with a lot of proud because I think that's an, uh, an amazing way uh, to finish a uh, transition in your life. Um, but the thing is, I also say goodbye to my, to my salary, and that was very hard because I started just seeing my account going down, down, down. And I also commit with my husband to keep paying my part of our housing costs. And I was like, oh my God, how do I pay here? How do I pay there? This is going very fast, you know? So I, I, I did that for the, the time I could until it was October and we didn't have the project ready. We were supposed to launch in September. We weren't able because again, that happens a lot. And, um, and uh, I didn't have enough money. I, I didn't have savings, so I couldn't just put my money again. Uh, so we said, oh my God, we need to actually raise money. So I went to the first friends and family, the parents, and then a good friends of mine and other actually good friends of Acton who also invest in the projects and are the first investors so far in the project. And, uh, and then I work very, very hard to make it, to make the launch. And we launch in December uh, instead of September, but we launch and I was like, yay! But that only lasts like one day because then I was like, oh my God, now I have to sell this. Uh, and then, so uh, now I'm in the struggling of today thinking like, okay, how many tokens do I have to sell? Oh my God. How many weeks do I have? What are we trying? Okay, what, can, what else can I try? Uh, I, don't, I know this about sales. I, know, I don't know this about sales. What I need to learn, what can we try? Um, we are in the middle of raising capital and I've been approached by a lot of, um, I, I, I talk to a lot of VCs, but a lot of, uh, been, they've been questioning my, uh, they've been questioning if I should go through that path, and they say, "Are you? Do you really want this path to go? Is this okay with your family and yourself?" And I'm like, "I'm not. I'm not sure." But, and the other side is like, "Okay, who who else can give me uh, bring the capital that we need uh, to make the project?" So we, we're in the middle of that as well, um, and in, and we're also transitioning in the business model because we started as a marketplace trying to raise the real estate investors and the micro, the real estate companies and the investors on the same time. And, and now we're, we're going through the process of being, becoming a B2B, B2C, only to be a B2B. Uh, so we're in the middle of that and defining again the business model. So a lot of things going on, but what, what I can say here is that I'm very proud of, of doing this. I, I don't feel regret of having zero money in my bank account. Um, and, and I also feel very grateful to be part of, of Acton because I do have a lot of more uh, uh, tools. Uh, and, and the biggest tool is that I, lear I learn how to learn. And I can do that and I can be very meaningful and question myself in my, if, if I'm doing the right thing for me, for the project, for my partner, for my family. And I can, uh, and I don't know the answer, but, but I know the, the type of questions that I have to ask myself. So thank you for hearing the idea, the story. Thank you. Thank you, Lorena, for, for sharing your journey. <laughs> I, I do remember a lot of those things you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny to, to look back at that. Uh, and, and I will say she is definitely very persistent. Uh, she has always been, and that's why she's here. Um, uh, because she, she has achieved everything by her persistence and her excellence. So let's open it up for questions. 
I, I know that there are several people who sent questions and I have them in writing, but, but I would uh, prefer if, if, if you start, those of you who are here, uh, just ask some questions. I have a question because you, I, I feel very related to the, to the story. <laughs> feels very relatable to, uh, to life and entrepreneur. But the, the one thing that strikes me, because it's been a process for you since 2008, 2010, till now. Yeah. And you've been in a family all this time. So how, how do you go into acting with, with a husband and tell him, look, I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to do that, and, and jump into this head first, and, and how do you convince him <laughs> into, into going on with it? Uh, because he give you three months and, and such. <laughs> So oh. I bet that was a hard, <laughs> hard conversation. Yes, definitely. Well, first of all, I, I went through acting without being married. So yeah, one less to, to talk to, you know? Uh, but, but now I do have two little kids and, uh, and I work a lot of remotely. So I'm in the middle of the meeting and I have my girl crying there. And I was like, oh my God, I was like, wait one second. Just go there, you know? And then sometimes I'm late in the meeting and then my husband is there and then we have to uh, go make the whole routine, you know? Like go through the bath and eat dinner, you know? And sometimes he's mad, but I also make my best effort to be ready when the time is for the family. And I think it's because it's something that I also value, I made the time. So, um, I, I try to be on the, in the moments that we are, that we have to be together. And if I'm not done with the work, I'm going to work later, you know? So it goes on me and that's something I have to balance. And I've been trying to balance it more because otherwise you're, you go crazy. But, but the thing is that we realize as, as a couple that we were both working in a company and had a very good job in there and good income also. And, uh, but we didn't know how long it will last. So that's where we thought, okay, we should start a company uh, or we should start investing. And that was one of the parts, right? Uh, but when, whenever we said we should start a company, we were talking, we were talking and, and he said, okay, you should, you should try because you are, you are more, risk averse than me uh, you are you take more risk than me you 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 said you are good at building something from new i i'm not that's not my skill he's a very good administrator so whenever he has a company uh who's in uh, going through fast grow and then stability and processes he takes this and make the whole system you know so this is not the profile for a for launching a company uh, so we said. So he said, "Okay, why don't you go and do that?" So and I'm gonna stay on my job, and I'll be like the the other part of 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 this. So yes, this is me uh, here, but I I, I'm, I won't be able to do it without without him, and and have this as a as a project of a, of the couple of the family, definitely. So yeah, hard conversations, but but important. And and something that worked was that. Um, like two or three years ago, uh, we built a vision for ourselves and our family uh, for 10 years. And, and, and th this was part of it. So whenever we have things, uh, it's like, okay, yes, we, we commit to this, but it doesn't mean that everything is perfect, you know? There, there's still problems. Sometimes we, I, don't, I don't finish on time, you know? Sometimes it's too, too harsh and it's like, hey, you're just like on the line and, uh, and you have to make renegotiate, you know? I just wanted to kind of clear up about your model. So it's crowdfunding with the token or how Okay, so Polybit is actually uh, an infrastructure, a digital infrastructure uh, that can, that enables the real estate company to raise the capital directly for, from the investors. And uh, so we're not a crowdfunding because we're not in the middle of the process. We built the whole infrastructure and all the integrations and the process needed uh, from the onboarding, the KYC, all the verification, the contracts, 
uh, the, the management of the tokens and everything, but also the distribution. We built everything and we provide that to the real estate company for them to make the race. That's how it works. But because of the technology, we can, we can actually have the lowest ticket that you want. So if you want one dollar, it's possible. Uh, but you're not doing syndication with banks, you're going from to private or companies or investors or family offices or who's your client, let's say? Yeah. Right, right now, uh, retail investors are the, the more regular ones, but I can see definitely there other, other companies like what you're mentioning. But the thing is that funds, um, office, family offices have a lot of money. So they don't need me to give them those, these opportunities. Uh, they can go directly to the real estate company and, and even have a better negotiating, negotiation for them specifically. You know, like they are a better fit for private equity instead of what we built. This is more like to actually democratize real estate investment and give the real estate company a broader base of investors because that you can actually uh, raise money from an, anyone in the world. So right now, for example, I have a project open in Mexico and I have investors that already invest and it's only $500 from here, uh, from other countries in, in Central America and from Mexico as well. The way I see it is this is your product, this is what you have been able to achieve. What I, what I found interesting was all this process that took you to be here which I believe it's fantastic, the way you were able to reroute all your, all your energies, your knowledge, your efforts into becoming and creating this product, which uh, the analogy that I would use would be like a rocket. Mm. Like you were able to, okay, I need more energy to do this, 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 and little by little, um, I think where you are, it's fantastic. And, Hard work pays off. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for making the time and sharing your stories with us. Um, your entrepreneurial journey definitely sounds not um, like the most common, uh, as, as I would say. So I would like to ask you what, like, one lesson that you would give. Um, for those who are starting out on their entrepreneurial journey that you have learned over like, your experience? I will say um, there is no there is no one there is no one path you know like maybe this is my path this is his path and maybe he made it faster or he made it sooner or you know like but Everyone is not, and, and your path will be as successful as, as it could be the other one, you know? So uh, I, I, I got a lot of pressure from myself, especially uh, of making this jump before, but now I am more than, I will say sure that this was the right moment for me, the right time in my life of meaning, the right time with the knowledge that I had, with the contacts that I have, uh, with the the structure itself, like the whole, the, the, my life itself is, is the best time for me and maybe it's not the best time for others. That's, that's something I can share with you uh, because I know it, it can become a lot of, of pressure and, and sometimes from yourself, right? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a phrase uh, that I like uh, for entrepreneurs. Uh, which is from Sheryl Sandberg. She says, if life gives you the opportunity to jump on a rocket ship, you should not ask for what seat you're jumping on. You should just jump in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how do you manage your time in, in regards to uh, advancing the, the, the company? Because you started as one thing, then you you jump in a business model, you work on that, and how, how do you manage that transition into the new business model that you were mentioning to us? It's been 
I, I don't know if I'm doing it the right way, but what, what we've been doing is that uh, we are still selling uh, the tokens that we have because the first commitment that we, that we did with the real estate company that we work with now is that we will be the ones looking and, and raising the money for them, right? Uh, finding the investors. And uh, so I keeping myself to that promise because I, I, I still think it's a good proof of concept that could also bring other real estate companies, right? So I'm still working on that. So that takes part of my time. And the other part is uh, talking with real estate, trying to talk with some of real estate companies that are close to see if this is something that may work with that for them. And uh, working on, and the other side, my, my co-founder is looking on all the parts of, of the tech side that is needed. Um, and, and, uh, and, and then the rest trying to change the pitch and see how we make it work to onboard new investors, but for part of it. Uh, so, so we can finish the round that we're uh, right now. Uh, but it, that's a definitely very hard question because that's the new model. We still don't have a customer. We do have on the, in the pipeline some interest, uh, but I'm still figuring out the business model. That was, that's, that's a big thing. Um, so without the business model, I cannot go and commit with a new customer, you know? And on the same time, I have the responsibility of this side. So. Again, I think that's, that, that's part of launching, you know, like having a lot of priorities in your, in, in your table and something that I do, do uh, that I do and actually works a lot for me, it's trying to outsource, you know, so I, so, the so I do have a legal team that helps me, a marketing team that helps me, um, an accounting team that helps me and, uh, and, and hopefully I, I could do more, but and on the on the rest because we're we're starting and we don't have a lot of uh, resources we're trying to manage what we can't uh, with ourselves and it's been stressful as well you know uh, I would love to be going faster you know like you you hear this so much so much um, it's like I, whenever you see Facebook or, or any any anything in the in social media it's like life is perfect most most of the time you know like life is perfect you travel you have the best body you know whatever you know and and but you hear the same in 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 entrepreneurship you know like it's like this company become a unicorn in three years this one is growing in 200 percent fast and and i like oh my god i'm still not selling my tokens you know like like this is this is this is oh, this is hard until until i say okay maybe someone is able to do that. I'm in my in this path, and let's just work instead of being worried. You know, like because you can lose yourself in being wor worried without doing something. So whenever I, I find myself doing that, I'm like, stop this. This is not taking you anywhere else. Let's go back and just work and go and go and go and hard work, as you said. You know, like and be very persistent, and and hopefully uh, it will pay off. What, what was the trigger on rethinking your business model or pivoting? Well, I I try to surround myself with as much advisors I can, and um, some of them were very loud about it, and they were like, you know what? Um, this is a very good idea, but a marketplace is so hard to make it work, you know, like because you actually have to have two parts. And I was like, oh, but don't worry, I already have one part because I do have a lot of real estate companies who want to raise money with me. So, so I have to just focus on one part of the funnel, right? The retail investors. But the thing is, that's the hardest one. And everyone was telling me, yeah, but how are you gonna do that? And, uh, and I said, well, I'm gonna focus, you know, like that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and then I, I started and they were like, aha, uh -huh, but that's not where you're, you're not the best at that. You're the best at dealing with the real estate companies because that's your background, that's where you are. And that was hard as well. And I was like, yeah, okay, it's true. I'm not the best in, I, 
in growth in the sense of digital marketing and, and attracting retail investors and you know all, the, all those parts and I was like okay that's something I have to acknowledge definitely not the best and and on the same time when that was happening and a lot of investors were, were uh, advisors were telling me that some big VCs told me the same like this is a good project but why are you making it as a marketplace this is crazy you're not going to be able to make it work and I was like why is people telling me so many times this maybe I have to hear it you know and then the the part that made the whole change for me was when I we went uh, we talked with some real estate companies and uh, and they wanted me to raise them like 200 million dollars and I was like I can't that give me time, I'm not ready, you know, I, I'll, I'll love to, but I'm not ready, I cannot give you that. And they say, oh, don't worry, I'm gonna do it. I have the people, uh, I just want your infrastructure. And I was like, that was like, oh my God. So we said, well, actually I built it in the sense that I can definitely give them the infrastructure. And they say, and you know what? Stay with Polybit, you, your, your marketplace, because that will be our second channel. So if someone gets, uh, from your uh, website, they can see all the projects, but if they come from my website, they can only see my projects. Can that be done? And I was like, yes. And we're like, that's what we want. And we're like, oh my God, we do have that, you know? Uh, and, and I started coming back to the investors and the advisors and saying, hey, do you think this is a good idea? They were like, yes, we've been telling you. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it, it, it did. Hopefully, uh, I, I didn't uh, spend or, or wasn't uh, too too late to hear the advice, but but that's how it went. Not necessarily very linear. You mentioned it um, just now a little bit, but do you have someone that you can pinpoint that had that has been a great mentor or mm. an inspiration for you throughout your journey? Definitely, Juanma. Uh, when I met him, I was impressed by what he had accomplished. And, um, but then I, I was impressed of the type of person and quality of human that he is. And, um, and he was kind enough to, to become my mentor. And I remember years later coming back to him and say, Hey Juanma, do you think I, you could be my mentor? And he say, I'm already your mentor. Like, what are you talking about? What this is? What kind of question is this? You know. Uh, but he is <laughs> he is definitely one who 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 is who's been very important in my career. Um, who saw potential in me even before I did. Uh, who challenged me to go further. Uh, and um, and give me all the opportunities and the open canvas and the black canvas to build and even and even help me when when I went to Acton in 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 Austin I remember I, we needed to make an upfront payment for the six or five classes that I needed to take and I remember coming home and said and my dad said okay I, you know I support you but that's not something I can do I'm sorry but you know, like, I'm sorry, baby, but that's not something I can do. And I said, okay, I'm going to ask one month. And I went there and I said, like, hey, could you sponsor me in, that, in this? And he didn't even thought about it. He said, yes, of course. Uh, we're going to give you a uh, debt without interest. So we're going to make the upfront payment and then you, you're going to pay us uh, Whenever, how, however you can, and I did. Of course, I did. You know, but 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 that that level of of trust uh, and how he built his companies and the principles is something that I I hope I will be uh, at, at least a little bit uh, or, or or do a little bit of, of what he did or has done, definitely. Oh, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, because I guess it's it, it's hard as an entrepreneur, you know, to have so much like sometimes self doubt. Um, 
but I guess having someone who, you know, successful, um, I don't know if they're guiding you or, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's useful to keep making those tough decisions. Yes. Well, but you, you have to know something. He's very acton, act, acton style. So whenever I come to him, mm -hmm. I said, hey, what do you think about this? And he said, hmm, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. Uh, or whenever I was working with him, so this is what I did. I need feedback on you. What do you think? And what do you think is the best idea to go? Hmm, and why do you think that? So at the end, I, he didn't say anything. You know, he just asked questions, very acton. I have to say. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully, a uh, simple question, but uh, what would be the book that you would recommend reading that had the most impact on you in the last, let's say, five years? If you could share that. I think it's very hard to say one that is not fair for the, for the books. Uh, so many good books, but 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 the the one who comes to my mind is uh, one from ben Brené Brown called Dare to Lead, to Lead, and she talks a lot about how to be a very I would say human leader and how to be very aware of who you are and what you do and what are your principles and and how do you share that, that with with your team and right now i don't have a team we're only uh, my co-founder and i and all those little teams that are outsourced but but i i i i'm sure that that's gonna be one of of our biggest milestones to build a a good team a, hopefully a, a a team of a players and uh and I, I do feel the responsibility to become an even best, um, a better um, version of myself uh, to, be, to be a better leader, uh, to actually build a community who, who's engaged and, and wants to work in this project, not because I'm gonna be there, but because they actually feel uh, connected and uh, with the vision and things. So yeah, I think without that, the project does, doesn't have a soul at the end, right? And, 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 it's, and, it, and it, it won't scale. So, so that one is very important for me. Thank you for sharing. How receptive were the people in Mexico in the tech industry to help you or did they saw you as a threat, as a better threat or? A lot of people uh, uh, told me to be careful. They say, no, be careful, be careful. Mexican people is crazy. It's, they're hard, they don't like uh, international people, you know, and that, that hasn't been my, my, ex my experience at all. Um, they've been very open, uh, but I also have to say that I, I think I've been able to go from the friend of the friend of the friend. And uh, that's why I was mentioning the power of, of our ca social capital and, and the important to tackle it as an entrepreneur uh, because it actually works. That's how I found my co-founder and that's how I found our first advisor. And then how, that's how I found our legal advisors, you know, like, like because the friend of the friend of the friend uh, made, made the introduction. <laughs> uh, a long time ago, I was seated where you are, and and Matias de Tesanos, do you know who he is? Was here presenting, and I remember he said, and that stroke in my mind forever. And he said, "Ah, uh, that's ridiculous." He said he, he was like. People think they're gonna be the ones who have this idea, especially in Guatemala. I don't know why people have this idea that they have to be careful of what they have. It's an idea, he said. He's like, the execution is what makes the difference. So share it with whatever you can because it's an idea and maybe they can help you. 
but staying with your idea uh, and take care of the idea by itself doesn't have a, a value by itself. And, and I never heard that before. So I was like, uh, so yeah, I, I kept it and I, I'm sharing it with you. His wisdom, there he goes. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful uh, for this time with you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for asking. Thank you for being engaged. And, and hopefully uh, this, this can also help you in your entrepreneurial journey. And, and yes, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll leave you all my contacts. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, I, again, this is a, a, such a wonderful community and uh, I think we engage too, 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 not too much, you know, and, and I know it's because a lot of people is very busy, but, but I do think this is an amazing community and I'm more than willing to help you. Thank you. Thank you.